Good morning, folks. We've got seismicity, solar wind, galactic dynamics, and some interesting updates on Earth's catastrophe cycle. We are starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was very quiet. The only item of space weather to note is in the solar wind, where a coronal hole stream is beginning to impact this morning. It struck with a solid bit of density and could produce geomagnetic unrest throughout the day. Folks, we've taken two seven-pointers in two days. We average one of these quakes every 20 days or so, and both of them were at the low velocity zone. Big blood echoes. And very quickly, while we're on the earthquakes, paper number 2 million on pre-seismic electromagnetic anomalies. Big golf clap for their magnetic field work there. Let's look at some visuals, and what we're seeing is them trying to determine what plays where in the galaxy. While the normal interactions they model inside of the galaxy work just fine, they find that near the outer reach, the magnetic fields begin to take over. This is important because it is the plasma cosmology prediction, and you know this. The outer arms keep bending and the rotation curve doesn't match, so they input dark matter at the galactic scale to help the gravity along. Looks like they don't need it. They just need to appreciate the magnetic fields. Folks, up next, this is the kind of nerdgasm paper most don't need to try to consume, but I will give a clap to this group for finding evidence of the Younger Dryas and previous three Heinrich events in the sample. Very rare to find a sampling zone able to nail them all, maybe one or two others known on Earth. And last but not least, do you remember that story from early August about a major oxygenation event before the worst extinction in Earth's history? It has to be added to the volcanic and the magnetic reversal evidence, and something has to explain them all. Well, now we've got major volcano evidence from the Younger Dryas, and no impactor evidence where they looked. Since there is impactor evidence elsewhere, we must remember that we need to explain the impactors, magnetic excursion, the Nova-level isotopes, and now, these volcanoes. Folks, this is where the full array of evidence leaves you unable to just settle on a Younger Dryas impactor hypothesis. There is much more to be explained than just the impactor evidence and in our disaster series. First of all, if you haven't seen it, you're really missing out. And second, two videos in the series do a great job showing why there may have been impactors at the Younger Dryas, but they did not come alone. We greatly appreciate your support. Definitely time to catch up as the official fall and winter meetings are coming and we'll be hitting the accelerator as we do every year with them. Come stand here with the rest of us ASAP. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here but right now at 7 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear, be safe everyone.